Hey everybody, welcome back. Last section of the first part of unit six, confidence intervals about proportions. We're talking about the difference of proportions and we are specifically going through um, the formalization of how to do that. So the first part, how to build a confidence interval for P1 minus P2. So the first of all is, that, again, we're gonna use our four-step process, okay? Um, so the first one is state. So we're gonna say, okay, P1, oops, minus P2 is the true difference in proportions of, give some context there. Then for the planning part, you need to have a two, first of all, you're gonna name the test. So naming the test is the two sample Z interval for P1 minus P2. Um, you need to show that it's independent through random samples. You need to show that there's a 10% condition and it meets the 10% condition and you need to meet it for large counts. And again, remember this is for both groups. So you need to do that for both P1 and, or for both one and two. In terms of the actual doing, remember general formula, so point estimate plus or minus margin of error. So in our case here, you'd have P1 hat minus P2 hat plus or minus Z times, and then the standard deviation of the combined or the difference of proportions. And we went through that last chapter. And then lastly, you're going to say, conclude, we are 95% confident, blah, 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 just like we've been doing all along. Now, some interesting things, because this is kind of, you know, like, say, for example, you want to know the difference between, I don't know, is this one vaccine really better than this other vaccine? Um, and so what the confidence interval will tell you is this, if the confidence interval are, have both ends are positive, that means that the first proportion is going to be greater. Okay, we know that the first proportion is greater by at least this and up to this is kind of a, what that's saying. The same thing can happen if they're both negative. Okay, that means the second proportion is greater. This would be the smaller value. This would be the bigger value. So then you would say, okay, that's the group from where we're doing things. And then down on the bottom, if just like what the example we did back on the previous page with the prom um, set up. And if you haven't seen that, links down below in the description, along with a copy of all these notes, kind of, you know, make sure you subscribe, like, comment, all that other good stuff. Anyway, um, so you got minus, so if you're going from negative to positive, that means that there is no convincing evidence because you're containing zero. So if it if it's negative, that means that the sec there is a greater proportion of the second population. And if the if it's positive, then it's going to mean that the first population is bigger than the second population. All right, so here's the example. So in a social study, a random sample of 150 teachers were selected and an independent random sample of 100 nurses were selected. Each person was asked if they currently have a second job. The results showed that 48 out of the 150 teachers and 21 out of the 100 nurses had a second job. Construct and interpret a 95% confidence interval, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So this is your job. You're going to hit pause. You're going to sketch it out. Come on back. We'll show you what the answer should be. All right, so first of all, state. So the parameter that we're going for is P sub T minus P sub N, or the proportion of teachers minus the proportion of nurses is the true difference, the proportion of all teachers and nurses that have a second job. Notice we have context. And then back over here, we have this nice little teachers minus nurses, so we can have in the back of our head exactly what is going on. And our confidence level over here is going to be 95%. This is also a good place to put out what your proportions are so that they're spelled out clearly. Proportion of teachers in our sample that have second jobs is 32%. The proportion of nurses is 21%. And so the difference of those two proportions is 11%. Now, for the plan, we're doing a two-sample Z interval for P sub T minus P sub N. Now for the conditions, we need randomness, we need to hit the 10% rule, and we need our normal, or we need to go through normalcy from large counts. And I ran out of a little room, so I added a post-it. So remember what randomness does is that this allows us to generalize to the population. Making sure that comes out okay. What the 10% rule, remember what it does is that means that means sampling with without replacement is okay.
And then this last part over here is that means our sampling distribution is approximately normal. And I'm going to trust that you can read all of that, so I'm not going to necessarily spell it all out. Now, why do we keep hitting on these concepts here? The reason why we keep hitting on those concepts here is because that is oftentimes one of those things where they kind of, at least in my five years or so that I've taught this, that a lot of times the multiple choice questions will start to kind of twist and they'll ask you, okay, so which of the following allows you to say sampling without replacement? Which of the following allows you to do normalcy? Which would, you know, and that type of thing. And so if we keep on going back and reminding ourselves of what these are instead of just going through this flow chart of, I need to do this, I need to do this, I need to do this, without really thinking about why I'm doing it, it helps, again, integrate it better into your head so that you will do better on the AP exam. So again, now here, just to be sure, 150 is less than one-tenth of all teachers, like in the United States. And then obviously, these numbers turn out to be bigger than 10. So for the do, we've got the setup here. So we've got our point estimate minus the error. So again, write out the general formula, because again, that's going to help get the idea of what confidence interval is into your head and demonstrate that you know what you're doing. The specific formula is this, so we're going to write this out. Um, so again, the proportion of teachers in the sample minus the proportion of nurses. Um, the nurses sample, um, who both have second jobs, you've got your critical value here. And then this big thing here is how you find standard error of a difference of proportions. And then right here is the math involved of it. So we have our 0.11 from above a critical score of 1.96, and then all of our proportion values and our n values here, okay? We do all the math. This whole big thing over here turns out to be 109 thousandths, or 0 0.109, about, just about 11%. So when we do the plus minus here, notice we're going anywhere from 0 0.001 to 0 0.219. So since these are both positive, we would say, okay, teachers definitely tend to have second jobs more than nurses do. Now, we'll talk a little bit more. It's up to you kind of saying, okay, is 0.1% really that significant? We'll talk more about that as we go. But at least everything's positive, so it's very clear that at the very least they may be equal, but for sure teachers tend to have more proportions. Um, greater proportion of teachers tend to have second jobs than nurses. So to that end, let's conclude this. We are 95% confident that the interval from 0.001 2.219 captures the true difference in proportion of teachers and nurses who have a second job. And again, we did teachers minus nurses. All right. So that's it for chapter eight, or for some of us, part most of chapter eight and a little bit of chapter 10. But regardless, it's the first part of unit six, confidence intervals for proportion. So we will be coming back here after your test and be doing means, if I remember correctly. And we'll be doing some more with confidence intervals. The nice part is, is that we're going to start seeing things cycle. We're just going to change some of the things. So instead of doing proportions, we'll be doing means. So again, same concept, different context, but you should hopefully pick up on it pretty quick. So anyway, with all that being said, I'll talk to you soon.